Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Spiritual Survival Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Brown. Our team's mission is to help you have eyes to see the times we are living in, take unprecedented measures, and prepare yourself spiritually for the events that will precede the second coming of Jesus Christ. If the mission of our podcast resonates with you, please click subscribe, like, and share this content. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Spiritual Survival. I'm your host, Randy Brown. And uh, I want to thank everybody for the wonderful comments that you've been uh, extending to me, and uh, they've been very encouraging, and um, hope that this week we can actually uh, have the same type of experience. So uh, what I want to do today, I want to uh, actually ask a series of questions, and um, I'm hoping that by asking these questions, I can spur um, a lot of comments and uh, a lot of you sharing your own your own feelings about these things that uh, we're going to uh, I'm going to be asking today. I'm just going to pose some questions to the listeners to kind of get your feel uh, about where you believe we are um, here in 2024. Uh, my feelings about where we are in 2024 um, have become or are becoming much more intense by the day. And so, uh, again, I'd like to get your feelings. I'm going to try not to say anything too definitive today, but to uh, pose questions that, uh, number one, may get you to uh, to ask the Lord for yourself. And uh, secondly, uh, so that we, you can comment on some of these questions. And if you feel this is helpful, uh, this this line of questioning might be helpful for friends, family members uh, who, who believe that we are just going on uh, life as normal, that you might be able to share this with them. And so uh, definitely would encourage that. So I want to title my podcast today, What is the Cost of Believing that Everything is Normal? Um, I had someone come to visit me about a week ago. And um, the direction of our conversation led me to believe that this person was not really awake to the things that are happening uh, and where we are in our spiritual time frame. And uh, <clears throat> every time I go down to our local grocery store, I, I love this grocery store. They play uh, music from the 70s, which was when I was in high school. And it really takes me back to a wonderful time in life. And it's such a drastic contrast about how I feel about where we are, especially in this country, America, and now, and where we were at one time. And it just brings back these feelings that are such a contrast. So um, another question I'll pose is everything really normal? Um, is what we're seeing in, you know, what we're seeing politically and socially, is that normal? Is what we're seeing in our government normal? Is the division and deception that we're seeing normal? Are things that are happening in our education system normal? Is what's happening with our, our justice system normal? And is what is happening at our border normal? Is this 2024 election coming up? Is this going to be normal? <laughs> um, are we ripe in iniquity? And I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, but here's a quote from President Nelson. He says, the adversary is quadrupling his efforts. If I think back to what uh, the adversary's uh, efforts were like back maybe when I was a teenager or even 20 years ago. And for ha in, in 2019, for President Nelson to say he's quadrupling those efforts. Um, we're in a time that seems to me is not very normal. 
Um, <clears throat> so what is normal? I uh, saw a podcast this week by Hannah Stoddard, and uh, she talked about some parents. I think it was in the 1500s, 1500s in England. And these parents taught their children um, the Lord's Prayer and the Ten Commandments. And when the church found out, I believe it was the Church of England, um, their punishment for the parents teaching their children things from the scriptures was that they took their fathers and, and burned them. Their fathers died as martyrs just for teaching their children something as simple as the Lord's Prayer or the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> and that just is mind-blowing to someone like me who has lived in this time in America where we've been so blessed and so free and so able to practice our religion. And, and uh, the question I pose is, has tyranny, opposition, and bondage actually been the normal? Has that actually been normal in history? <clears throat> and is the, the time we've been living in, is this really kind of been abnormal um, from the rest of history? And uh, are some of us blinded by the this feeling of normalcy and that we're, you know, that we're expecting to continue rather than preparing ourselves spiritually for the type of events that these parents may have lived in, you know, or lived in in the 1500s in England, where there was such tyranny and opposition and bondage. Um, have we been living in a time out of covenant protection and blessings that is unique in all history. And uh, do we just assume that that's going to continue? So uh, is this an example of things continuing as normal? And this is a quote from President Nelson from April of 2020. We live in the day that our forefathers have awaited with anxious expectation. We have front row seats to witness live what the prophet Nephi saw only in vision. That the power of the Lamb of God would descend upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness and with power of God in great glory. You, my brothers and sisters, are among those men, women, and children whom Nephi saw. Think of that. And I ask you as the listeners to think, when we have a prophetic proclamation like this, um, does it feel like things are just normal? He goes on, regardless of where you live or what your circumstances are, the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. And God's prophet, Joseph Smith, is your prophet. He was foreordained before the foundation of the earth to be the prophet of the last dispensation when nothing shall be withheld from the saints. And I think that is a, a remarkable thing, that we're living in a time where nothing shall be withheld from us. If we have the faith to believe our prophet, and if we have the faith to practice what he's asking us to do, of learning to hear him, learning to... Um, be taught by the Lord himself. And the quote goes on, Revelation continues to flow from the Lord during this ongoing process of restoration. And that's from the April conference of 2020. <clears throat> the next question I pose to you is, will being stuck in normalcy keep you from certain blessings? I, I know it would for me. Um. So if you just think life's going on, you know, um, normally, and you know, there's nothing, nothing urgent to be preparing for. Um, I know for my wife and I, we had a very real wake up call in March of 2020, and nothing has been normal since then for us. It has been, it has been something we felt every single day. And because of that lack of normalcy, um, every word from the prophet has had 
such uh, urgency in our minds. And since that day, we have been really striving to take unprecedented measures. And so my question is, if you're stuck in normalcy, will that keep you from taking unprecedented measures? Um, so here's another quote by President Nelson. And I ask, you know, is this things going on as normal? He said, it is now time. And I've highlighted that right now or from the day he gave this. It's now time that we each implement extraordinary measures, perhaps measures that we have never taken before, to strengthen our personal, spiritual foundations. Unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures. And so I ask you, what extraordinary measures are you taking? What things are you doing now that, that uh, or what measures are you taking that you've never taken before? Has it led you to be in the temple more? Has it led you to become a temple worker? Has it led you to study the scriptures differently? What are they for you? Will being stuck in normalcy keep you from fulfilling, keep us from fulfilling our birthright to become kings and queens? I think, uh, you know, if you're stuck in normalcy, you probably would hardly even be thinking about that. Um. It's a concept that really has awakened in me and has led my wife and I to begin studying Isaiah back in 2020 and has led me to understand this principle of ascending. Isaiah teaches of a spiritual ladder and the different levels on the spiritual ladder. And I've we have come to realize that where we really want to be is at this, this level here, the level of sun servants. This is a celestial level. And in order to do that, we have to have been born again. We have to have ascended into a relationship with Christ where we have the gift of the Holy Ghost working in our lives in a powerful way, sanctifying us. And that we're on this covenant path progressing towards the tree of life. And... <clears throat> eventually having our callings and elections made sure so that we can have the, the power of sun servants and seraphs. And these are the, the Latter-day Saints who will become the kings and queens of the Gentiles. And we'll have this power of God in great glory in uh, going out and, and working with power to gather Israel in this time of wrath that's coming upon the earth. Will being stuck in normalcy keep us from experiencing miracles? In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Why do you think that is? <clears throat> it will be because we'll also see some of the greatest evil, some of the greatest trials the world has ever seen. Between now and the time he returns with power and great glory, he will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. And President Nelson from October of 2022. Will being stuck in normalcy keep us from paying the price for priesthood power? In a coming day, only those men who have taken their priesthood seriously by diligently seeking to be taught by the Lord himself will be able to bless, guide, protect, strengthen, and heal others. Only a man who has paid the price for priesthood power will be able to bring miracles to those he loves and keep his marriage and family safe now and through eternity. As I look at where, where the world is now, where our country is now, and, and what I understand from searching the scriptures, of the uh, extremely difficult things we're going to be passing through, um, I feel an urgent need to, to pay this price for priesthood power. And it seems apparent to me that being fully aware that we're not in normal times is uh, 
is vital and it's a very big catalyst to take these kind of measures. Will being stuck in normalcy keep us from binding ourselves to Christ? And we will have to be bound to Christ, bound to Christ through covenants. And it's that binding that's going to bring this power. The power will flow from the covenants. My dear brothers and sisters, may you focus on the temple in ways you never have before. President Nelson in 2024. So you may notice here that President Nelson is, is telling us. Um, he's speaking prophetically of the, the, the days of normalcy are over. We're not returning to normal. <clears throat> and that we need to be awake and we need to be practicing these things or putting putting implementing in our lives these things that he is telling us. Will being stuck in normalcy keep us from having eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to feel and know? Or maybe not having eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to feel and know is what's keeping us stuck in the normalcy. I feel like uh, in, in 2020, March, I think it was the 16th or 18th, something like that, when the, the earthquake happened here in Salt Lake. Um, my eyes became wide open and have not closed since. President Nelson, also from 2020, I renew my plea for you to do whatever it takes to increase your spiritual capacity to receive personal revelation. Are we doing that? Are we, are we doing whatever it takes? Is that a high priority to develop this spiritual capacity? Um, I think if we believe that everything is normal, um, it probably isn't as high of a priority as it could be for someone who understands the reality of where we're at. Having eyes to see. Um, I did an episode uh, with Todd McLaughlin. It might be about two months ago where we talked about acquiring the spirit of prophecy and how absolutely vital it is to our spiritual survival <clears throat> to have the spirit of prophecy. Now, the spirit of prophet prophecy is mentioned so many times in the Book of Mormon, which is a book written for our day. It's a book written for us that are living in the time right before the return of the Savior and the time of tribulations. Um, I think having eyes to see will lead us to learn the manner of prophesying among the Jews. That means learning to see the scriptures and learning to see the way Hebrew prophets actually prophesied. They didn't prophesy in the way a lot of us today think about prophecy, uh, where they just kind of say, you know, this is going to happen in the future. They prophesied by telling stories from their time that gave us that gives us patterns and provides types that uh, we need to be able to see. And so learning to see the scriptures this way and understand this manner of prophesying among the Jews um, will enable us in, in seeing the blueprint of the end time in those prophecies. Um, learning to see what Isaiah is saying, you can see this, this blueprint of, of the things that are going to come to pass. And it helps us see the fullness of the gospel and the covenants, Book of Mormon especially. And this enables you to know it's coming. It enables you to know how to prepare. Um, I suppose that's why, you know, beginning in 2020, um, almost every word that President Nelson said, um, I felt like there were, there were deeper things in those messages and in those words. Because at the same time, I was studying Isaiah, and it just, and, and life wasn't normal to me anymore. And so his words uh, felt deeply prophetic. And, and I was kind of seeing his words the same way I might study Isaiah. Um, this also enables us to see how the Lord will protect us. Um, and how to fulfill our stewardships. So the Lord can bring forth his great and marvelous work. 
being being stuck in normalcy keep us from seeing new and deeper things in the scriptures, particularly the Book of Mormon and the Book of Isaiah. I think those two books are were created in in pretty much the same way. Um, so another question I posed to you is: What if this year, twenty twenty four? You read the Book of Mormon differently than you ever have before. And what I mean by that is um, if your <clears throat> normal way of reading scriptures, or particularly the Book of Mormon, is to start at uh, First Nephi chapter 1, and hopefully by the end of the year you've gotten to uh, the, the last verse in the Book of Mormon, um, that would have value. But what if you did it in a way that could bring far deeper value? And so here's another question I pose. If only a hundredth part of the records that Mormon and Moroni had, only a hundredth part was chosen to be included in what we have in our current Book of Mormon, um, I invite you to ask yourself, why was this included for our day? As you, as you read every day, or as you search, Everything you're reading, ask, why was this included for our day? And I think if you'll do that, I try to do that with every everything I read in the Book of Mormon. And it opens up to, you know, um, these things are types and patterns that were given to us to warn us and prepare us for the events preceding Christ's second coming, which is right now. And what if... Everything is a type. Um, I've gone through and tried to mark um, every type I can find, every pattern I can find. And I think you'll find that almost everything in the Book of Mormon is kind of like Isaiah. Stories from their day that typify exactly what we're going to be passing through and, and are already passing through. We're already seeing it in our society in our government. And what if you could begin to see these things and search them at much deeper levels? Another question, was the Book of Mormon written for the ancient Nephites and Lamanites? Or was it written as a witness and a warning for us? What if as we read the Book of Mormon this year, 2024, we're looking Add it as a witness and a warning for us. I think if, if we do that, we'll have our eyes open to see things that we would have never seen before. And we'll see the, the book you know, completely in a different light than we've ever seen it before. Did they, Mormon, Moroni, those who compiled the records, did they see the tribulations? to precede Christ's second coming. Now, I might add here, is the year 2024 the beginning for us in America of those tribulations? And if you think about uh, what our prophet has said, I think you can see that that, that is true. And this is what... Uh, President Nelson is preparing us for. <clears throat> um, also, you can look for uh, literary devices this year as you study the Book of Mormon. Um, one type of literary, literary device is bracketing. And an example would be if you go to 3 Nephi chapter 21, the Lord says, Great are the words of Isaiah. Therefore, you have them. Therefore, search them. And then you go to 3 Nephi chapter 23, and he says again, Great are the words of Isaiah. You have them, therefore a commandment I give unto you to search them. And so he's got these two bookends where he talks about Isaiah and how important it is and how, how great it is. And he's asking us and commanding us to search them. And those are kind of like bookends. And so what that means is everything in between chapter 21 and 23 has uh, there are treasures buried in there for us for our time another type of literary device is a chiasm 
And you'll see chiasms in those verses in between 3rd Nephi 21 and 23. We'll look at one in a, in a well, actually here it is now, in 3rd in Nephi 21. He has this marvelous chiasm. And if you look at a chiasm, you'll see that the very first line of the chiasm matches up with the very last line of the chiasm. They are in parallel. It's called parallelism. And then the next one, we'll call it B1. Um, you look down and the, at B2, and you'll see that it's that they're in exact parallel. So all the statements in a, in a chiasm parallel each other. They're being repeated. And there's always um, one right in the middle. And the one in the middle is the, the treasure. It's, it helps us see exactly what that prophet was wanting us to get out of this. And it's, it shows us in a way that's, that, that's unmistakable what the message is of that chiasm. This chiasm happens to be given to us from this, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the very center of this chiasm, this is the, the treasure that he wants us to get out of it. Many among the Gentiles do not believe the great and marvelous work when it is declared to them. And so what he's saying is, in the days we live in, there's going to be great division. And there's going to be many of the Gentiles. The Gentiles in the Book of Mormon are us, the the, the Americans, um, the Gentile nations who uh, mixed with Ephraim and, and came here and and uh, made this a covenant land. There's going to be many who do not believe the great and marvelous work. And that's something that is a warning and a, a treasure for us to pay attention to. What if in your study of the Book of Mormon this year, you looked for the chiasms and you looked for literary devices like these? Um, what if at the center of each chiasm, you could discover a deep truth you were meant to discover? And here's a big one. What if you didn't skip the Isaiah chapters? <laughs> what if this time through you made the promise to yourself? That you, you, you have your eyes open. You know things aren't normal. I'm going to go through these Isaiah chapters in 2 Nephi particularly and look for types from their day that are happening in our day. And if you need a little help, maybe you could go, I did an episode uh, probably six weeks ago uh, titled, Did Nephi Give Us Encoded Warnings? And I think you'll see that there are encoded warnings that perhaps Nephi wasn't allowed to talk about, so he used Isaiah. Would you be willing to get help to check out some of the resources from the Isaiah Institute <clears throat> to uh, understand each chapter before you just go ahead or, or don't just read the chapter headings? Actually dive in and, and look for yourself and, and get the help. Go to Isaiah um, IsaiahExplained.com. And, and get help with the, the meaning of each verse and each chapter. What if you were able to dive deep enough into the Book of Mormon this year that you could see these deeper prophecies that are hidden in types and discover this manner of prophesying among the Jews? Then it begins to open up so, uh, it begins to open up all of Scripture to you. So here's a pattern and a type from the Book of Mormon that I just want to show you as an example. Um, this week I was reading in Alma, uh, starting the book of Alma, and came across Alma chapters 2 and 3, and saw this pattern. Um, An Antichrist tries to become king. This is talking about Amlesi. An Antichrist character tries to become king. He tries to deprive the people of their rights and privileges of the church. His intent is to destroy the church. The voice of the people says no. However, he forms an army as numerous as the sands of the sea. This Antichrist and his followers initiate war on the believers. The Lord empowers his people, his covenant people, 
to fight them. And this Antichrist and his hosts are caused to flee because of this great power that the believers had. So as you look at that pattern, do you see um, an end time warning for us? Everything about the end time, whether it's the book of Revelation, the book of Isaiah, the book of Mormon, is centered on an Antichrist character, a tyrant, who will try to commit genocide on the world and will be so powerful that he's going to deceive people. And when you can kind of understand that that's kind of the center of what we're going to see in these end times, and you look for things like that as you go through the Book of Mormon this year, it, it'll just blow your mind. <clears throat> now, focusing on Alma chapter 3, the followers of this Antichrist take a mark upon their foreheads. Now, we just finished studying the Book of Revelation. Is, uh, is this a type of exactly what the book of Revelation was saying about uh, the end times? About taking the mark of the beast? The mark brings a covenant curse. The Lord does this to distinguish between his covenant people and those who are under the curse. And then the point that I think the Lord is trying to make at all of these types of and uh, patterns is that he will protect and preserve his covenant people. And this is intended to help us know as Latter-day Saints that we have covenant protection and we will be preserved <clears throat> by covenant keeping, by making and keeping covenants and binding ourselves to Christ. And then, of course, we have the, the Isaiah chapters in Second Nephi. And again, you can go back and watch my episode on that. But I, I challenge you to not skip Isaiah this year. Really dive into it and get the help you need. There's resources. Um, but again, then there's there's Third Nephi's Third Nephi chapters eight and nine, where the it depicts the uh, earthquakes and destruction that came upon the people in Book of Mormon times right before the Savior's return. He performed a cleansing. This is the type of the cleansing that we're going to see in America. The question I pose to you is, as we enter 2024, are we officially in those times? I'm not going to make any definitive uh, statements today. Um, these are all questions because uh, these are things you should ask yourself, and these are things you should take to the Lord and seek to be taught by Him. <clears throat> and these are ways to... Maybe jump in and and break break out of the normal way. Maybe that you've been studying the scriptures. So, will being stuck in normalcy keep us from enhancing our spiritual gifts? Um, I think this is something that President Nelson is pleading with us to do, and we can't do that if we're just we're just stuck in normalcy. Everything's the same. Things are like they've always been. The, um, we have to be paying the price to do this. This is from President Nelson again, April of 2020. What if you were to ask the Lord to teach you to open the heavens? Are the heavens open to you? Do you feel like they are? If you don't, right now is the time to ask the Lord to teach you how to do this. Will being stuck in normalcy keep us from rending veils of unbelief? <clears throat> and I think this is another thing that President Nelson is trying so hard to break us of. Um, I feel like the gospel I see now is drastically different and deeper than the one I saw four years ago. When I came home from my mission, I felt like I really knew the gospel. And a few years later, when I got married, I felt like, well, I didn't really know it that well then, but I do now. And uh, I feel like now, the, the more I know, the more I realize it's just a drop in the bucket of the infinite knowledge that's out there for us. And the, 
what President Nelson is inviting us to partake of. But we have these veils of, of unbelief, these, uh, you know, this is the way it's always been done. This is our traditions and our precepts of men that <clears throat> keep us from believing that that mysteries and, and great treasures of knowledge can be ours. So again, what is the cost of believing things are normal? I'd propose it keeps us in our, our little box of, of our belief system that is surrounded by these veils of unbelief that keeps it, keeps us from believing that deeper things can be ours. Um, that we can actually know Jesus Christ face to face. That we can have a covenant relationship that allows us to ascend the spiritual ladder and become kings and queens of the Gentiles and and uh, be at a celestial level, having having his power and great glory upon us. And I would propose that these ve veils of unbelief will keep us in the category of the unwise virgins. And we all know from the parable um, how that ended up for them. Well, being stuck in normalcy keep us from overcoming the world. The whole book of Revelation is a book of what becomes of the faithful saints who through a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ overcome the world. And it tells us that they become kings and queens and priests and priestesses. These are they who are arrayed in white and are in the temple night and day. President Nelson gave a whole talk on it in October of 2022. Overcoming the wor world means overcoming the temptation to care more about the things of the world than the things of God. The things of the world right now are, are uh, important to you or pressing upon you. Um, I invite you to step out of the world. Step out of the world right now, today. It means trusting the doctrine of Christ more than the philosophies of men. It means delighting in truth and denouncing deception. Denouncing deception, that is so critical. Um, if you look at the parable of the ten virgins, the ones that stayed in their their little box of beliefs and and uh, you know it's it's probably this this deception that keeps us thinking that life is going to just go on as normal <clears throat> and becoming humble followers of Christ it means choosing to refrain from anything that drives the spirit away it means being willing to give away even our favorite sins and I would say even giving away anything that ties us to Babylon, ties us to this world in which we live in. There's there's a millennium right before us, and, and nothing we're living in in this celestial realm is worth it compared to what lies ahead in a terrestrial realm. And uh, this is all where we're at in my belief. If you saw my last episode with Rob Urey, um, he talked about uh, the first part of this American eclipse and his sure beliefs that this is a warning for us. And I, I uh, ask you to go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, I believe that the American eclipse is a warning and a, a, a mark. Uh, it marks a, a time in, in our life where we've been warned and the Lord does that. He warns us. And then when the warning is over, he brings the calamities. And so the second part of this eclipse happens very soon. It happens in April 8th, 2024. So again, I, I pose to you, are we living in normal times? Or are things normal? And I, I think if we're not awake and... Uh, following our, our living prophet and binding ourselves to our Savior, Jesus Christ, not seeing these signs in the heavens, 
um, we may be in danger of, of being amongst the unwise virgins. Um, yesterday, I was reading in uh, Ether chapter two and thinking about this American eclipse. Seven, you know, two two eclipses seven years apart, approximately, that cross over the United States, cross over such important um, locations perfectly that it's, uh, you know, it, it's not normal. <laughs> it uh, it should wake, awake us from our sense of normalcy. Anyway, as I was thinking about that and it uh, marking the time when our warning is over, these verses really, really just hit me. Uh, as as a warning for where we are right now in 2024. And he had sworn in his wrath unto the brother of Jared that whoso should possess this land of promise, the United States of America, from that time henceforth and forever should serve him, the true and only God, or they should be swept off when the fullness of his wrath should come upon them. Another question I pose, could this uh, eclipse that comes across America and crisscrosses us be a, a warning that we've had a time of time of uh, preparation, a time of repentance, a time to uh, bind ourselves to Christ? And are we in danger of being swept off? Is the fullness of his wrath about to come upon us? Verse 9, and now we can behold the, the decrees of God concerning this land, that it is a land of promise. And there's that telling us again, it's a land of promise. Um, lands of promise are for covenant people, for those who will serve God. And whatsoever nation shall possess it shall serve God, or they shall be swept off when the fullness of his wrath shall come upon them. And the fullness of his wrath come upon, cometh upon them when they are ripened in iniquity. And again, my question from the very first slide, are we now ripe in iniquity? Verse 10, for behold, this is a land which is choice above all other lands. What does that mean, choice above all other lands? Well, well we know where the New Jerusalem is going to be built. We know um, where Zion is going to be originated wherefore he that doth possess it shall serve god or shall be swept off for it is the everlasting decree of god and it is not until the fullness of iniquity among the children of the land that they are swept off so we've been given warnings there and, I, and again i challenge you this this year, as you go through the Book of Mormon, look for these things. Look for how these apply to us right now in the very days we're in, in 2024. Um, this is a timeline. And I know everybody's not into timelines, and, and maybe uh, I shouldn't be into them as much as I am. But <clears throat> this was put together by Rhonda and Farrell Pickering. And I've studied so, so much. Uh, of this timeline and uh, when they put this out it was 2023 we're now in 2024 and my question to you to you for you to take to the Lord and find out for yourself are we in America in our seven-year period that it just began the seven-year period of tribulation upon us in America here we have the the great American eclipse and uh, this will wrap up in April of 2024 and we're here. Um, and I'm not here to tell you what to believe on that, but to ask you to, to take it to the Lord. Is it significant? Are we there? Oops. And so uh, this is my question. Are we really here? Again, I'm not here to tell you whether we are or not. Uh, I have my own beliefs. They've come from searching and from 
asking the Lord and seeking to be taught by him. They've come from the last uh, three plus years of feeling this intense sense of abnormalcy. Um, but take this to the Lord. And as you study the Book of Mormon this year, ask these questions. Um, so search the Book of Mormon in a way that is not the normal way that you've been doing it. Look for these things and see what the Lord tells you. Thank you for being with us on the Spiritual Survival Podcast. Again, if the mission of our podcast resonates with you, please click subscribe, like, and share this content.